Billy felt like a caged bird that had been set free. He turned the handle that wound the clockwork mechanism. But his eyes were glued to the ever-changing view out of the windows. Here was he, a boy who had never been out of the East End of London, now flying over fields and rivers and forests. Green had not been a colour that had figured in his previous life. Even the weeds that struggled to survive between the cracks in the pavement in his part of London were black with grime and soot. But now there was green everywhere, in every shade, from emerald trees to jade pasture. They were flying low enough for him to see farmhands working in the fields. Occasionally, one of them would notice the cigar-shaped shadow on the ground and look up as the airship cruised by silently. Billy imagined them open-mouthed in amazement. With the clockwork motor fully wound, he joined Charlotte at the helm, from where he had a better view of what lay ahead rather than just what was directly below. What's happening there? he asked, pointing to a field in the distance. Jake came to look. Are they having some kind of race? wondered Charlotte. They could see figures running across the field. No, it's more serious than that, said Jake worriedly. I think they're chasing someone. Can you go slower and take us further down? Nervously, Charlotte adjusted the controls and was gratified when the airship responded to her touch. We should ask Mr Moon said Billy, racing back to where Oliver was snoring. Moments later, he returned. I can't wake him. I think it's because he was up all night and there's an empty bottle of wine in his hand. By now, the airship was quite low and they could see the glint of weapons in the sunlight. Some of the pursuers looked like farm labourers, but red-coated soldiers were amongst them too. The thing is, whose side are we on? asked Jake. I don't fancy the chances of the chap in front. There's a river ahead. It depends if he can swim. The army hasn't been particularly kind to us lately, observed Charlotte. Then let's help the fox, not the hounds, said Jake. How? asked Charlotte. One of the mooring ropes is still coiled on the winch next to the doorway. You could lower me down. Billy, can you tie a slipknot on the end of that rope so we can make a loop for him to catch hold of? Charlotte, can you travel at the same speed that he's running? Showing no trace of fear, Jake twisted the knotted rope around his metal hand and pressed a button to make his fingers lock tightly on it. Winch me down, he shouted to Billy, and he opened the gondola door. The flight had seemed quite calm and serene before, but now he was outside, being buffeted by the wind, he spun round and round. Billy lowered Jake further down. The airship was now travelling just behind the running man. Jake twisted his head round to look at the pursuers. They weren't gaining any ground, but then again, they weren't falling any further behind. Jake was about to call out to the man they were chasing when he stumbled on a rock and collapsed. Billy was watching intently and, seeing this development, let out enough rope to lower Jake to the ground. Can you make the airship stop, Charlotte? he yelled. I'll try, but it won't be instant, she responded as she slammed the controls into reverse. <laughs> Thank you.